People ask me, why do you do it? What makes you want to fly and share it with the world? And if I answer them honestly, I would say, I don't know. It's just something you're born with. My childhood is filled with memories on Navy bases. The sound, the smell, and the feel of an afterburner on takeoff. I always knew I wanted to be a pilot, but missed out on having that relationship with them. But what if you were given a chance at that? What if you were handed a gift of digitized 8mm and cockpit voice recordings? I'm not Dutch, I gotta take them now. Go ahead, Taylor. Uh, we're gonna head out uh, as soon as we get around. Naval Aviator and OG YouTuber. I knew I had to put this puzzle together and knew exactly who could help me do it. Commander Steve Cobra Queen, Rear Admiral and former Blue Angel number one, Denny Rattler Wisely. Come along on this multi-part series as we dive into the Duck Chronicles and try to tell the stories that the OG YouTuber never got to. So I was getting ready to leave my last combat cruise. I was in Cuba Point, Philippines, and lo and behold, the Rooks pulls in right behind us and we were kind of switching a lot of things. So I felt a little responsible for Gary, so I got Gary in there and sat him down one day, and I think we drank about three or four dozen <laughs> QB specials. <laughs> and I made sure that he understood that he wasn't to do anything stupid over there because <laughs> Anita would skin me alive if he did. <laughs> and he must have done very well because he came back and next thing I know he shows up at Top Gun as a student. <laughs> it is my pleasure to welcome Rear Admiral Denny Wisely to the channel. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good to see you. Yeah, it's nice to be with you, Brian. Appreciate it. Well, why don't we start uh, and talk a little bit about your background and how you ended up in VF-114 in, in uh, 1972 on the USS Kitty Hawk. Well, that was my third deployment to, to Vietnam, and all three of them were with 114 and, and Kitty Hawk. I had 65 and 66 time frame, 60, with four-month turnaround, 66, 67, which was really interesting for me that's when i shot down a couple of airplanes and got shot down myself <laughs> and, uh, and luckily uh that escaped being a pow by the by just not much i'll tell you just wow. uh, mm. probably the, you know, i can go into that story if you want a little bit later but that, that was probably the best flying that i ever did just to get away from downtown hanoi and, and not get captured in december on my birthday in december of 66 I was on, on a Alert 5, sitting on a cat at 2 o'clock in the morning, reading a World War II one, a novel, a fighter pilot novel. And, and actually, it was World War I. It was Rickenbacker I was reading. Oh, cool. And, and, and Sitting in the launch, cockpit, uh, just, just on alert, waiting sit, in, the, sit, in the dark? Yeah, my flashlight. You, know, you, have, you have a flashlight <laughs> hanging oh. around your neck. Oh, my gosh. You know, for, in case you lose your instruments at night, you got something to put in your mouth. And, That's great. And, and look at the instrument panel. Sure. So I was reading. You know, we, we all kind of did that stuff. You know, you know, it, it beat just twiddling your thumbs for two hours on sure. the alert. And all of a sudden, it stand by and launch the alert. And they launched, they launched us. Uh, my sister squadron guy was on the other cat. I went off. I went off first, and I'm sucking my gear up, and and they come up on the on the on the uh, the uh, radio and said, "You're you're steer three one zero one hundred miles. You're clear to arm, clear to fire, right off the cat." Wow. So we're 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 going along, and so there was a cloud layer at about three thousand feet, and we stayed right down low. I didn't want to pop up high and have their Samsung radar say. Hey, they're coming. Sure. So I stayed. I stayed down low, about twenty five hundred feet, something like that, and and just drove on in there. And sure enough, we got you know there was two bandits, and we got a clear to fire, and we fired a Sparrow missile, which at night just goes off and blinds the hell out of you. <laughs> um, and boom, goes in. It goes into the, right by the clouds where these guys were. Ba boom, a big big ball of fire, and you know scratch one. And I, I turned around and, and came out and told the Beryl McRae was in the other airplane. I said, hey, it's me coming out, Beryl. Don't shoot at me. <laughs> yeah. Get the other guy. And so Skipper has us orbiting right over the rail line to China. And we're, you know, it's about a gun an inch. And sure, and shooting, there's MIGs, suddenly MIGs everywhere. And there was about six of them. 
and they, they were doing a, a, what they call the wheel. They mm -hmm. want you to get down there and turn with them, which we couldn't out turn that MiG-17 right. if it was flown properly. And so I was, I just went, went vertical, you know, which later people started calling the egg maneuver, which Top Gun, you know, developed later on, but that's what mm -hmm. I was using. I go, I go up there and I was playing like a chess game. I was watching mm -hmm. the, and looking where I could come back in the most opportune angle and time to bag one of these guys in the circle. And I look up and I, and I, I was had this guy figured out. He was, he was, you can't see my hand. He was down, yeah. down to my four o'clock low. <clears throat> and I look out to the left and there's a, a MIG on the tail of an F4. And I wasn't sure whether it was Southwick or, or, or home because we're in this big circle. This, and the guy, the guy was in a right, right turn chasing Southwick. Suddenly he starts a sl slow roll to the left. I fired my winder and the thing went right up his tailpipe. Mm, wow. Bang, bang. Bye bye, MIG. Yeah. Two days later, I'm, I'm coming down there. And we're, we're low out of the mountains. And I, I've got a sand. We had a, a APR system in the airplane uh, a, a, that was a warbler. It, it would, if the thing was painting you, it would have one frequency. If it was locked on you, it had the pulse rate went up. And if, it, and if it shot a missile was locked on, then pulse rate went up even higher, mm -hmm. and and your 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 heart was going at about the same rate as doodle <laughs> doodle, 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 you know, it scared the hell out of you. Sure. And so so you know, I'm turning like a son of a gun at, down at about 200 feet, and I, and I got hit. Boom! All of a sudden, the mm -hmm. airplane felt like it was the stick felt like it was not working right, and I roll out, and and I'm, I'm heading towards back towards the mountains, and. Um, climbing to get make sure I clear the mountains and John Nash comes alongside and says, "Hey Rattler, you uh, shut down your left engine. You're you're leaking gas and it's on flames. It's lit off by your afterburner." So I shut the left engine down, relit it, and stayed out of burner. Got the thing up to about 6,500 feet, and at that that point, for for whatever miraculous reason, the stabilator, which is the pitch on the F4, locked in the in the locked position in, in a neutral position so i'm here i'm flying the thing on basically no hydraulics hmm. huge pressure on on the, the left rudder pedal to keep the wings level and we get get to the mountains and i get to a point where i can't control anymore and jimmy lang's in my back seat and, he, and we can't even talk on the intercom he, he's looking in the mirror and it was quiet enough we can say okay jimmy go and mm -hmm. so he goes out i go out um, short, short story is uh, he, he breaks his arm from we're going so damn fast. His arm got out in the slipstream, broke mm. his arm in two places. Mm. Real quick, but, talk about what you were thinking and feeling at that moment when you when you knew you had to eject. What, what's going through your mind and what does it feel like to eject from a, a fighter jet at, you know, 300, 350 knots? I, I, I used to be six foot tall and I'm five foot ten now. Oh, wow. And, you know, and it's from and, that and part of it's part of its age, but but I think I lost an inch just from that ejection. Mm -hmm. Bang! It, it was it, you don't have a choice. You know, you're either going to go into the ground, and, and I'm coming down to shoot, and I saw my airplane blow up and crash, wow. and I said, "Thank goodness I'm I'm floating in this parachute, not in a great area, because if the, they caught you and uh, we didn't get picked up, we'd probably be be, be dead because um, the the path out loud didn't take." They couldn't. They didn't have the capability to take prisoners. So he gets to the ground. I I land in a tree and never got to the ground. We we I get picked up first and, and we could pick him up. And as he's coming up, the three three pronged um, cable on on the hoist starts to part. Mm. And the first one pops, and the second one pops, and he's spinning like a top. We get to I, I, the crew chief looks at me and I, I said, I said, keep, gotta keep it coming get him up. Yeah. And we got him. We got we got him in there but on the last strand of a three prong wow. thing. Yeah. He joined uh, VF 114 in August of 1971. Right. According to the to the log books here. Um, when you first met him, your impressions, um, any funny stories you remember? Just I, I, any I, just, I just remember one an affable, nice guy, you know. And your your mom's a sweetheart, you know. I hope she's doing well. She is. Yeah. Um, in '72, we got called up early. We were supposed to leave, I think, in March, and then a Tet Offensive was happening, and, and we had a, a day and a half notice to pull out in, in February, and away we went. And we became fast friends, and and 
and flew a lot together on that that cruise. You know, I was a experienced guy, and he was my wingman a, a whole lot of times. Oh, cool. You guys depart out of San Diego January 20th, 1972. March 3rd, 72, you're in Subic Bay. And then a week later, March 9th, 1972, that's his first combat mission. Um, and he went on to fly 144 between the two deployments. There's a lot of green ink, which I think you you can explain the significance of the green ink in a logbook, right? Yeah, it's, that's, a, that's a title of my book. Exactly, right? Why don't you explain yeah, what it, that is? Well, yeah, it, if you've got green ink in a uh, mission, it means you're, it's a combat mission. You're getting shot at mm-hmm. or you're shooting or whatever. And it, it totally differentiates in your logbook, you know, you got a whole bunch of green ink, you've been there. Yeah. That's the Kitty Hawk, right? That's, that's Kitty Hawk. Yep. It's a... Our sister squadron 213 in the F-4 there. Okay. The first cruise, uh, we went down, we had Yankee Station, Dixie Station, you know, really logical for locations in the Tonkin Gulf. You know, Dixie Station was down south, okay. so South Vietnam, <laughs> sure. and Yankee was up north. Were, you know, it's amazing how they could pick those names. Yeah. And you also had A-6s on board for bombing? A- A-6s and A-7s. I think that's an A-7. It's my nose intake. Okay. Okay, there's there's my airplane. See the see the two hit kills on it? See those two uh, yeah. red flags? Yeah, so that's that, you. That's my that's my kills. That's my airplane. Wow. Yeah. See, I was the ops officer. I was, I was the CO is two oh one, DEXO is two oh two, and I was two oh three. Side number. That's pretty cool. I, I don't have. A, I don't think I have a picture of that airplane like that. That's that's neat. Well, I can. We can do a screen capture of that in my software. I'll send that to you if you're interested. Sure. Looks like yeah, uh, down, going getting ready over, for some there's a J, Yeah, there's a JBD. You know, jet blast deflector. So you get behind it, the cat, and it, that goes up. So the guy going off ahead, he is not blasting it right at you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pretty good stuff. So we didn't have the stripe on the airplane until at 72 cruise and okay. uh, Joe Mills Joe Mills became the XO. He wanted to put a Coast Guard stripe on the airplane. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering if um, your dad actually took these, or he had his back seat, or to do it with a camera and do it. I think the stuff if, we're, we're seeing here, where he's out of the airplane, I'm pretty sure oh, that that's him. Oh, he's in the he's in a catwalk or something. He, he must be, or he's on deck or something. But yeah, there is also we'll see here in just a minute some footage from the cockpit, and I asked Steve Queen the same thing, and he said that's got to be his Rio because he's he's too busy flying the plane, right? Yeah, exactly. Regardless, yeah, this is. I think he's in the. I think he's in the catwalk taking this thing. Okay. And who's two hundred one? I'm not, you know, I'm not sure who's, in, who's actually in that airplane, looking right at him. It's kind of funny. Okay, here's his. Here's what a cat shot looks like. <laughs> he's in the, somehow he got that thing in the cockpit, and I don't know if he was supposed to or not. Uh, um, my mom kind of indicated he just kind of did it and didn't tell anyone. And uh, it's, I'm sure glad he did because it's some great footage and uh, it's pretty special. cat shot with your ordnance and as much fuel as you can take to safely get off the deck right and then you've got a 
immediately. Yeah, you had four. You had four thousand pounds in, in, the, in the belly tank. You're looking for a refuel right away, or to take on more fuel yeah, right yeah, after you get off yeah, the carrier. After you get off the carrier, go up overhead and take on about, about two thousand pounds of gas, which kind of tops you off while the launch, the uh, attack guys are launching. And usually you're you're flying in a, in a circle, and you're what you're. After you tank, you're you're just flying above there, watching all the other attack guys come up and get in that circle, and you're just staying above them. And then when the lead attack guy starts heading out towards um, on the way to the target, you just kind of fall in behind and protect them. And th this is definitely from the back seat, you can tell. Um, and are you? When you're tanking, are you on autopilot or are you flying this airplane? Oh, you're flying it. Wow. You're, no, oh, no, you're flying it. What a skill. You, you, fly, you fly that that probe, you know, right in there. We used to joke about it being like a little bit like sex. You just put that baby in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fighter pilots, right? <laughs> <laughs> when you're, when you're pl plugging into that basket, you know, it's right up at your two o'clock high, high position. And... And you're you're looking at the, air, the tanker airplane, and and at that thing almost at the same time, and you just kind of you know, you know you're getting close. If you if you start hesitating, that the basket starts wobbling around mm. on you. So the thing, the best approach is, is you know about you know five or six feet be, behind it, you just drive it forward, and boom, it it, when it drives it in and secures the, the probe into the basket, so you're ready to take out fuel, and then you keep it keep it there and you and you want to make sure you're not getting a big bow in the hose the, mm -hmm. the hose is probably 30 feet long and you know you, as soon as you get get the thing plugged then you throttle back and so you don't get that bow and the hose going in there And later on, later on in '72, we're back. We're back over there with uh, your dad flying on my wing, a lot of times. And you know, I, some of those missions, you know, you're going out. You're it's so long to drive all the way to Hanoi to to go. You know, and, and you're getting shot at, and and it just seems like it goes on forever. But you know, I, your dad and, uh, was right there on my wing every darn time, and did he did a great great job. Well, I, I think back a lot of times, I wish we had uh, the, the modern age of digital cameras in the cockpit like they have now. Mm -hmm. My goodness, what, how different it would have been capturing stuff from the war oh, or bet. any time flying. You know, the, those digital cameras, you can just stick them anywhere and the quality is so good too. Yeah, yeah, you know, think how grain, look how grainy 8 millimeter oh, is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no doubt. He was a YouTuber ahead of his time, right? He was... Uh... He had yeah. the solution, or he had the uh, product, he was looking for the solution, right? <laughs> exactly. I'm glad we're having this conversation. Yeah. There's a lot of things we didn't know. Yeah, no, this is great. <laughs> <laughs>